at the jetty again. It's been a while since I've been out here. Doesn't look like there's anybody out here today. So, got these crab snares that I'm gonna be using. Homemade. I feel like if you can make your own crab snares, your chances of catching crab are 10 times better than they would be with any store-bought ones. Especially if you know the design to make. But it's a long walk out there, so let's get our bucket, charcoal, got a pot. We're gonna cook up the crab if we catch any. But yeah, it's a long walk out there, so uh, let's go. And when you're walking out to the jetty, it always helps to walk on the sand as far out as you can. So if you come out here at low tide, you can pretty much get to about the halfway point to where you want to get to. And when you finally get to the spot where you can't walk any further because it just gets too wet, well, then it's time to climb up on the rocks. All right, I see a good place to set up right about here. And one thing I always look for when I'm trying to set up in a spot, so I always look for a good place to land, the fish or the crab, whatever I'm going for. There's not too many rocks right here, and I know I could stand right here if I need to and hoist those crab right up. Good little flat area too. So now when it comes to crab snaring, you really don't need any fancy gear or anything like that. All that matters is that your gear is heavy duty. And look at this old rod that I've had. I had this thing for about five years. You can see the tip. There's no eye on the last tip. Got broken off, but still works just fine for a crabbing rod. And my crab snares, when I was making these, I forgot to put the rubber band on here to keep the cage closed. So I've got some hair ties that my girlfriend gave me and some paper clips to keep it on. So, you know, crab snaring, you just need heavy duty gear and you can pretty much jerry rig anything. As long as you can get the bait in the water and have that crab snare to sit in one spot, you're likely to catch some crab. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about all the technicalities on the best locations, the best time, the swell, the rod, reel, and everything. I did that already. I have a video out on that already. I think it's called the Comprehensive Guide to Crab Snaring or something. This little card right here should be popping up right now. There's a lot of information in that. Every single thing you need to know about how to up your chances for crabbing is on that video. So I'm using squid right now, but my goal is to try to catch some smelt and throw those in this one of these snares. Smelt, I feel like, is one of the secret baits that really do amazing for crab. And I'm really stuffing this thing full so I can get a good scent trail out there in the water. And I've got a four ounce weight here. Sometimes I use a five ounce, and I like the weight on the outside, especially a pyramid weight, because once it sinks, it sinks down like this. The weight gets stuck in the water like that so it doesn't move around. And when you got these snare loops up like that, instead of laying flat on the ground, I feel like there's a lot better chance of a crab getting caught in those. So let's close this thing up all the way with the hair tie, cast it out. All right, let's do it. Now one tip that I can give for casting, because I see a lot of people trying to cast these snares out and they don't get too much distance, is you gotta think of your rod as a spring, as a catapult. So when, you're back, when you got your snare or your weight behind you like this, you gotta give it a bounce, bounce, and when it bounces up, that's when you cast it. So bounce. So it's like you're using a tool and you let the tool do the work for you. And now just like that old infomercial says, set it and forget it. So it's gonna take, depending where you're at, depending how fast the crab bite is, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, that's how long I like to leave the snare out there. It is 9.50 right now. I'll check this one at 10 o'clock. And I've also got another rod. So now I'm rigging up a sabiki to my braided line. And I'm gonna show you a little knot. It's like the improved clinch knot, except this is like the super improved clinch knot. So you do it just like you normally would. You know, five or six twists on the braid. And you put your tag in straight through that. Now normally, on the improved clinch knot, you would just put that tag in straight right back through there, right? So you do that, except you do it one time, 
and then you wrap it around, put it back in again, and you can even do it three times. And that strengthens the knot even more than the improved clinch knot. So let me give this a little bit of lube, pull it up and then down. And that's like the extra special clinch knot. That thing is not gonna go anywhere. All right, it's actually been about 15 minutes for this one. So let's see if we can get anything on here. Make sure my drag is tight, tightened all the way. Don't want that drag to slip when you start reeling in. So gonna just tighten the line first, tighten it up a little bit, pull it in just a little bit, see if there's any crabs feeding on it. Pull it in. I don't think I have anything on this one. Oh, I do have a little one. So now the trick is, you wanna go slow when you get up to this point. Well, there's Dungeness crab out there. Female, but it's small. But I was saying, when you get up to the point right where you're gonna land it, a lot of people make the mistake of reeling in fast, they kind of panic. But if you do that, then the snare loops open. So you wanna keep your reel very slow and bring it in just as slow and bring it up and over. That's a female, you can tell by the carapace on the bottom. It's not a pointed apron right there. Not the carapace, the apron on the bottom, that's the female. Well, that's a good sign, at least At least there's some Dungeness crab out here. Throw her back. Well, the hair tie and the paper tip clip are doing well. Let's get this thing back out there. I got one more rod right here. And let's see how this one does. Doing the same thing, make sure the drag is tight. Oh, yeah. oh man, I had one. Dang. Oh, I feel like I had, there was a good one on there. Missed him though. Felt heavy too. Ah, oh, damn. All right, this one feels pretty heavy. Something on here. Well, two small dungies, one rock crab so far. Hopefully, hopefully some males start biting. All right, now plan B. I've got a bucket full of water. Got my sabiki. There's a little fish. Well, that's actually not bad because I was hoping to get one of these and use it for bait. So I caught this smelt, right? And I said that they're really good bait. Really, really good bait for crab. And what's cool about them, look, Oh my gosh. That was too close. I don't know how it didn't fall between the rocks. Jeez. Anyway, I was saying, all right, all right, all right. Hey, 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 hey. All right, you know what? Just for that. Okay, so what I was saying is that these things are like perfect size for the crab snare too. Cut one in half, it'll fit perfectly in the crab snare. So, right about there. So let's give this a try. Smelt right there. Oh, it's a little too big. Actually, let's see if we can squeeze him in. There he is. He fits perfectly. I feel like this is gonna have a lot more luck than that sh the squid. So let's, let's see, only way, one way to find out. So this is the one with the smelt. Nothing. Man, maybe this is why I haven't seen too many crab snare reports come in for Dungeness crab. Seems like it's just been slow. Lots of small females, a lot of rock crabs, small males. And you know, honestly, 
if I don't catch any keepers or if I don't catch anything big that I would want to put on a, on a video, normally I would just scrap this footage completely. But I made a second channel called Fisherman's Low Key Life. I know I mentioned it earlier, but it just gives me the opportunity and the freedom to post whatever I want. So like a day like today where I don't necessarily catch anything worth making a video in my opinion, I still would like to make a video out of it because I do have the footage. So if you are interested in seeing a trip like this that doesn't exactly go as planned, then feel free to subscribe to that second channel. But I'm going to give this another 30, 45 more minutes. If I don't catch anything, I'm just going to head out. That feels good. That feels really good. This is my last one. I'm about to leave too. Definitely a crab. Now if it's a keeper, I don't, whoa, that's a huge, oh, hey, that's a keeper. Keeper, keeper crab. Keeper Dungeness, big one too. That's huge. Got his whole claw. There we go. That is what I'm going for, baby. I was just about to leave too. Looks like I'm gonna rebate. Wow, look at that. Thing is huge. That's a big crab right there. Heck yeah. It's literally packing up too. So to keep these guys, they need to be five and three quarter inches. And this guy is over six and a quarter. They need to go from that line to that line right there. And that one is nearly the length of the entire measuring tape. So that's a big crab. I'm gonna put him in my bucket, rebate again and cast out. Might as well. Got me my keeper, finally. All right, well, I am going to be cooking up that crab right here. So I've got all my coals. I think I'm just going to use all the coals in here. And there's plastic on the outside of this bag, but inside it's just straight, it's just coals and paper. I'm gonna light that entire sack of paper. All right, there we go. The paper's burning, hopefully it transfers to the coals. All right, yeah, it looks like it's going good. So I'm gonna let these heat for 15 minutes. And while I do that, got my pan here. I'm gonna fill it up with some salt water and that's what I'm gonna dump on here and that's what's gonna boil the water. So how I'm going to cook this is I'm going to take off the carapace, which is the head here, and I'm going to cook the body and the leg separately. Now the thing, if you're going to cook a meal out in the open public like this, where you catch it, there's still rules and regulations. So the minimum size is five and three quarter inches, and how you tell is from the carapace. So if you cook it, you can't just bash the head, just demolish everything. You got to keep the carapace in one whole piece. So there are two ways that I can recommend to get this out and you can kill the crab instantly, cause it as minimal suffering as possible. And the carapace comes out to its mouth right here, right here. So this whole thing is gonna come off, including the mouth. So the way that you can get that off, you grab all the legs and everything and you find a rock or a brick or something like that. You hold the legs and just smash it off and the whole carapace will come off instant crab death it's like you curb stomp it you know another way simple fold all the legs underneath and then what you want to do is just grab the carapace as close to the legs close to the center as possible as close to the apron as possible and just rip it off one go like that crab is dead you got the whole carapace here so if any department fish and game people come out and they are like, what did you just eat? You'd be like, I just ate this and this is its head. Go ahead and measure it and let, leave me alone. Not measure from spine to spine, but you measure from right above the spine to right above the spine.
So after you take the carapace off, you can take the apron part off, which is the end there, rip off its, um, the, the, what do you call these, the dead man's fingers on the side, its gills, where it breathes. And then you can break it in half, split it in half just like that, once like that, back the other way. And there are some guts inside. If you don't want to eat that, which I am not 100% sure, but I think the Department of Fish and Game still says don't eat that just for a chance of domoic acid, but you can shake that out. And it'll all come out. And what you're left with is just beautiful meat. And where its head and mouth was, you can rip that out also, both sides. And if you wanted to, if you had a brush or something, you can brush all its claws. You can brush its claws and brush its legs and brush everything off and all the little bit of the dirt will come off, but a little bit of dirt never hurt anybody. So, all right, that's cleaned up, ready to go. Now, just waiting for the coals to heat up, get some salt water and put it on the coals. All right, guys, water's just about boiling now. So the two pieces ready to go. That, uh, those coals out here, took about 15 minutes to get this water to boiling right now. Pretty good for being cold and windy. So I'll drop those guys in there. All right, let me try to keep some of that heat in with my, my old pan. All right, let's see, set the timer now. 20 minutes, eh, 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. All right, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna call it good. Let's pour this water off and see how it looks. Smells like it's done. Knowing me, I might just spill the crab out here. How many times have I done that in previous videos with the abalone and fish? Yeah, I would say that that's done. Take a look. Looking good, huh? Smells great. I bet anybody else on this jetty smelling these charcoals too is like, damn, what is that? Somebody's cooking barbecue out here. All right, let's let that, let that cool off right there. And I gotta have some kind of sauce. So you know I got the butter. Let that heat up on here first a little bit. Oh man. Actually, let's try this with no butter first. Break off a piece. So. All right, as that melts down, each leg and each claw has this knuckle here. And inside the middle of the body, that's where a ton of meat is. So if you just break off from where that knuckle is, normally I would just eat this off like this, but to show you all that meat right there. Damn, oh, that's so good. There's, oh my God, it is so sweet. It's crazy how a crab like this can have so much flavor and you don't add any seasoning at all. It's just like naturally sweet. Like what kind of meat is naturally sweet like that? Damn, that's good. Oh, and then you add a little bit of butter. Dude, you cannot beat that. Whoa, hell yeah. God, it's so much more satisfying after you're fishing all day and you think you're gonna go home skunked and the last cast, literally the last cast, you pull up on something huge and you're like, what could this be? Could this be two crabs? Could this be some kelp? And then it's a six and a half inch Dungeness crab. Man. All that meat right there. See that? All right, butter's melted. See that crab right there? Oh man. Yo, dip it into the butter. Oh my God. You really don't even need any butter, honestly. These males, they're always a little bit bigger than the females. So like one of my favorite things to do when eating crab is you get that knuckle there, all that's meat right here. Look. That whole thing, that's all meat right there on the end. So rather than just biting it off like that, if you got some butter or you got some kind of dip or whatever, dip it in there, shake off the excess. And you really don't need a shell cracker. You don't need a cracker or anything. You can just use your teeth and you should be able to get the, the meat out in one whole chunk. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yo, these Dungeness crab are the epitome of crab, edible crab. 
That's just on one leg. I got eight of those. And I got the knuckles from the inside. And I got the claws. Even if you catch crab like this and you don't cook it out here on the rocks or in the beach, it's still so satisfying to bring it home knowing that you caught it yourself. And all you need is just the crab and a little bit of butter. I swear, just a little bit of butter. And that's the perfect combination for almost any seafood. I don't know why butter goes so well with seafood. One quick plug, I was sold out of these t-shirts. They're all back in stock. So if you want, fishermanslife.net. And this crab season, it goes from the first Saturday in November every year until um, June 30th or so if you're south of Mendocino and July 30th if you're north of Mendocino. All right, and before I finish up eating, I wanted to talk about the regulations real quick. So they changed something this year. Before you could crab snare all year round because rock crab, they're open all year round. You can keep 35 of those a day. But now they made it so you cannot use crab snares when the Dungeness season is closed. So from June to November, you cannot use crab snares even if you're going for rock crab. I guess that's because they don't want you to accidentally snare a Dungeness. All right, let's see how I can describe this. It's like very rich, very sweet, like it has a meat texture like chicken. But the thing that stands out the most is just how sweet it is. This is good. And you want to do somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes for a crab this size. Oh my gosh. Man. I don't really have anything else to say. I'm just like speechless enjoying myself over here. Now besides those knuckle pieces, another one of my favorite parts is on the claws. If you can crack the claws all the way, what you're left is just this little shell right here. But all this on top is meat. Something about holding something and then dipping it is, is what, what gets to me. And just look at that. And that big piece, that was what's holding that meat on there. Oh, that's about gonna do it. 